about the sequence before halftime? They, they said it was a killer for them when you guys had the pick and then uh, Ben's touchdown run near the end of the half. I mean, it's, it's the first half, we said it killed them. What did it do for you guys? Yeah, I think the same thing. Obviously, what it took from them and gave to us, I think that was the biggest exchange in the entire game because there's four major predictors of success, obviously blocking a kick, but one of them is certainly scoring before half. Your percentages of winning go way up. And uh, that was big just to get it up by three scores. But, uh, you know, we had just scored two minutes before that. And to go back-to-back -back scores, we felt good enough with how our defense was playing that uh, if we were able to come up with back-to-back -back scores at some point in the game, we felt very comfortable about our opportunity to win. Coach, how much do you know about the quarterback situation? Did that play a we didn't know a whole lot. We knew they had a very, very good quarterback who was player of the year uh, who was not going to play. And we knew they had two uh, freshmen who they felt very, very capable with. And, uh, you know, I think both those guys are going to be very good players. But it's always tough to make your first start uh, on the road, let alone in round two of a playoff game. And, um, you know, I think they did as, as good a job as they could. But, um, you know, not having their, their leader, I mean, I'm not going to answer for their coach. You can ask them. But I'm sure it weighed on their mind somewhat. We were prepared for both quarterbacks, one a little bit more of a runner, the other a little bit more of a thrower, and we changed our game plan a little bit uh, to be commensurate with whoever was in. Second game in a row, your offensive line is really dominated. Yeah. Are you know, surprised by that? No, none. As I've said before, uh, when we got here two years ago, we took over a 2-8 team that had no run game, and we were going to build this offense and build this team around the offensive line and the toughness that exuded from that offensive line. I feel very, very good, and they're all young. All of them are going to be returning except one. And uh, it doesn't surprise me when we do what we do, but um, I'm very happy that they could come out the way they did. You know, it's just very prototypical. They do a great job, and you guys ask for five guys, and there's no offensive linemen up here. They're kind of, you know, they're kind of the, uh, the unknown ones, but uh, they, they put them on a pedestal as, as a team and a program, and uh, they came through for us time after time after time. And this was a great defensive front that they faced today. Brady, you had two interceptions in the second half. What was, talk about turning them over because one of the things that, that you always see about them is that they, they don't give the ball away. You guys were able to do that a lot today. And talk about the game plan. And you said you guys they thought you disguised your coverage pretty well. Yeah, we knew we were going to have to, uh, you know, kind of show, you know, opposite coverage of what we were and then try and get, you know, the quarterback guess a little bit. And I don't really know what changed. I think we just got more comfortable with, um, kind of their offensive scheme, kind of figuring out what they wanted to do, and um, we were able to get some hands on the ball. I mean, I didn't pick up any of those balls without, you know, the help of my teammates. So, um, you know, I got to give credit to Wyatt Delgado and Chris Kopp for <laughs> giving me interceptions. So uh, I'd like to thank them, and, you know, that's it. Greg, you really hadn't played four games. Did you feel rusty at all coming in? Um. A little sore, but my friends and family were praying for me a lot, which really helped out. Um, it's always easy when you can go into a game and just hand the ball off a lot, the majority of the game. So I just praise God, and it was just a really good experience. Very, very fortunate. Now, you run 20 before halftime. I, I, I'll be honest, I was looking down, I looked up, and you were, you were coming in, and looked like guys were standing still. What did you guys catch them in because that worked so well on that play? Uh, I think just towards the end, they probably thought we were going to pass a little bit, but we have a little play off that, so which is a good run play, getting our linemen up to backers and that kind of stuff. So we just kind of tried that, and it worked out right away, and it was great. You know, we had our linemen blocking downfield and everything, so it was perfect. And I just had to beat one guy, and I finally could do it this year. So. <laughs> 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 it was like a delay? Is that, what, is that kind of what the Yeah, it's just kind of like a draft play. Yep. Okay. It's some pretty big holes today. Yeah, they were nice. They were nice. You know, I love I love running behind those guys, my fullbacks and that kind of stuff. But you know, just the first the first quarter and that kind of stuff, we were just kind of figure out what we were doing. Coach Hooter so with his play calls and that kind of stuff, and then he figured out what we needed to do, and then he just propelled from there. Coach, how much faith do you have in your passing attack? They were talking about they thought you run the ball. I have a ton of faith in our passing game, but we all know that, I mean, we're not a spread team that's going to throw 70 times a game. We're a 50-50 run pass team. Always have been. We always will be as long as I'm here. And um, our pass game emanates from the success we had in the ground game. So, And you saw some of that. Now, we did miss a couple passes here and there, but for the most part, if you notice, a lot of our big plays were when they were going man coverage and loading up the box. So they would put eight, literally eight, and sometimes nine guys 
within the vicinity of the box, and that, that freed up man coverage on the edge, and that's where we were able to take advantage of that. Uh, case in point is the, the final score there. Instead of running the ball out, uh, you know, they were just playing press man on Fritz, and, uh, you know, these guys saw it, and they said, hey, I think we can get a fade on them. So, you know, Greg made a great pass. Fritz made a great catch and put it away. Greg, what does it mean as a quarterback to have a player like Fritz, conference player of the year, as Coach said, they know that when you guys need a play, you look for Fritz and you still can make the plays in those situations. Yeah, Fritz is just, he's an amazing player. Um, it's always a, makes my job a lot easier when you can just throw it in the vicinity and he's going to come down with it. Um, yeah, just amazing player. Um, not much more you can say about him. Wait, you get the defense talk about um, you gave there was two times where Cole was pushing it and you guys stopped him, especially in the second half. What do you guys take from that? How are you going to apply it to the rest of the playoffs that time? I mean, we work so hard during the week in practice. Is uh, you know, once they push, you know, we know we got to buckle down and I keep telling the guys that you know we're going to go as far as the defense will take us, and you know, we just keep working, keep working, and someone's going to give for us. So. Glenn, no turnovers two weeks in a row. Is that the case? Mm -hmm. Didn't think about it. We'll take it. Um, you know, this was a team that uh, fed off of turnovers. Co coming in, they were plus 22 on the year, which ranks them in the top 10, which is exceptional. And you can say whatever you want, opportunistic, but I mean, they're a very good, uh, they're a very good team getting the ball. And obviously, ball security is a part of our game. If we don't turn the ball over, we win 92 percent of our games. And I like those odds. Um, so you know, this was a great example of what can happen. But a lot of people don't, you know, a lot of people think uh, ball security just kind of appears out of nowhere. And what I love about these guys is they understand that, um, like anything else, a conscious effort to take care of the ball is something you work at in and out of practice. And they did that. We, we set a challenge out to them, and, and they took care of the ball all week in practice, and, and it came to fruition in the game as well. Greg, how did you feel throwing the ball today since you were all for four games? Mm -hmm. How was your rhythm? Um, it was definitely um, an improvement throughout the week. I was a little sore. Um, definitely <coughs> felt good today. What was, what was your name? Um, I had Bruce Sternum. Um, I have a lot of faith in Fritz. Um, he's going to go attack the ball. And I trust him every single time that I put up in the air. That he's going to go get it, come down with it. So I think that's good that we have that trust. Fritz, you want to talk about your uh, connection with Greg, especially this game? Um, I mean, we've been on all week, and he's been doing a great job stepping in. <coughs> and he kind of led our offense today. I thought he did a great job. Just. Running, running the offense, whether it's run plays, the pass plays, just keeping us stalwart um, every drive. So I think that's what he did the best today. Well, one negative stat sure jumps out of me is the penalty situation again. How many were there? We had eight penalties today for uh, 59 yards. Okay. Is that uh, just a wrestle on the defense, or where were they coming from? Oh, it was both sides of the ball. It wasn't just the defense. We didn't have any on the kicking game side, I don't believe. Um, but, uh, you know, look, it, we play an aggressive sport. That's the way it is, and our kids play it more aggressively than most. And uh, once in a while, a flag's going to come out. I thought the officials did a fantastic job overall today. I've got no qualms about that. You know, penalties are going to be part of the game. We don't want to have 59 yards in penalties. Uh, you know, we don't want to have any, but we can kind of accept being in that 40 range. Um, uh, there was one that, that should not have been uh, – we should not have taken it. It was just an offsides, but uh, there's another hole that we got to work on. Again, those are things we can work on. But uh, you know, I think that's a testament to these guys' will and character to overcome those. We've, uh, regardless of how many penalties we've had all, had all year long, they've overcome those throughout the game and throughout the drives. And um, I'm pretty happy overall. Greg, what was your only thing about the other two? Yes, they're both very good. There's no question about it. Mary Harden Baylor obviously is a, uh, I know they have a loss on the year, but they have a fantastic football team. I've had an opportunity to speak with the head coach of Linfield, Joe. 
and uh, Joe has a great ball club as well, undefeated out there, and, and they play some good football too. So, you know, I don't know who we're going to get. Uh, my wife keeps teaching me and telling me, look, just control the things you can control, and I really don't care who they put in front of us next week. We just got to give it our best shot. I, I, both teams are going to be stellar. I mean, we're one of eight teams playing in the country right now, so at this point it really doesn't matter who you draw. They're going to have great offense, defense, and special teams. I do know we have an opportunity for a home game if, if Mary Hardin-Baylor wins, and uh, then we'll go on the road if uh, Linfield wins. But, uh, you know, there's, there's no dogs in this field at this point. One of eight teams, you're going to draw a good one. Both are good.